This is a tutorial on how to make a rubric using Google Docs. The nice thing about doing it this way is that it takes all the math work out of it for you and it's also very easy to grade students on a tablet or a computer. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make the rubric and the first thing that you need to know when you make your own rubric is to come up with some headings that you're going to grade the student on. So here's an example of a rubric that I made. And it doesn't matter exactly what you put on this side yet. You can figure that out on your own. But the part that you need for this project is the headings that you're going to grade. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to actually create your form. And to do that, what you need to do is go to your Google Drive there, your inbox, your email inbox, and click right here on this square. And you'll click Drive. Once you click Drive, you're going to go over to the Create button, and you can see my rubrics right here. Create Form. Sorry about that. Now it's going to give you, it's going to make you title it, so I'm just going to say Test Rubric. You title it whatever you want to call it. And you can make it pretty if you'd like. I don't really care about making it pretty since I'm the only one that sees it. Then you'll come right to this screen right here. I've got my title up there. You can require Southern Tioga people to sign in if you want, however you'd like to do that. I don't bother because I'm the only one that ever uses my own rubrics. And then you've got a choice to make, deciding what kind of rubric you want. And I'm going to show you a few examples of ones that I've done. Here's a rubric that I made that was based on 10, 7, 4, and 1. Those were the four scores that the students could get on it based on their advanced to below basic out of 10. So you can do it that way. Or you can do it a little bit less exact and say advanced is an A, proficient is a B. However you'd like to do that is up to you. So you can assign a number to it or you can just assign a letter to it. And here's the difference. This is one of my rubrics that I made that uses a scale. I can pick any number from 0 to 9, 0 to 10, 0 to whatever I want. And you can put any range in there that you'd like. So this is the category. This is a 50 point assignment and I just divvied up the points the way I wanted them. So that's the one that I use for A, B, C, and then D and F. That's a scale. The other way that you can do it is this way, which is using a grid and that's the one that I used for the rubric that goes like this, 10, 7, 4, 1, 10, 7, 4, 1. And so I can say that this student, you know, whoever the student is, got used four songs. Perfect, great. The songs were cross-faded to a proficient level. And then, you know, it's according to the rubric what you actually put down for that. So that's a decision you can make. Another way you could go is if you want to just hand write in a number each time, you could also make it text so that you can do that. And I will show you how to do that too. I'll show you right now. So in your test rubric, if you're going to use a scale like that, what you're going to do is create your first question title, which is going to be, you know, sample question number one, and that would be, you know, your use of four songs would be a great sample question one. It's your headings over here that you'll use as your questions. And then you're going to make the question type, you'll make it a scale. And then you make it worth as many points as you want it to be. You can give them clear down to a zero if you want. You can go up all the way up to ten. So I use a multiplier if I have a hundred point assignment. So I just say zero to ten and then I multiply it at the end. And so you can label it, you can say basic, below basic, and you can say advanced, if you'd like to. And say done, and that creates that question. So Now the second way that you could do this, like I said, if you would like to use a grid instead with exact numbers for everything, what you will do instead is you're going to add an item, you're going to create your question, but instead of the question type, it's going to be grid. And now when you make your grid, your rows are going to be your questions. So sample one, sample number two, 
And so your questions will show up across the board like this in your rows. And then your columns will be whatever numeric value you give to it. And so it'll all show up as one question. It'll essentially just be one question. So you can say SAMP number three. Make sense? You probably just answered me, didn't you? And then you can say 10, 7, 4, 1, however you want to do it. And then once you set up that question, what you'll see is it'll create that for you. There's all your questions, and there's all your choices of answer. Now, one thing that I usually do first before I do any of that, and I should have probably told you this before, but I didn't. I always put the kid's name in first. So first name, I add an item, I call it last name, and I make these questions text questions. That way... I know the kid's name, and I like doing them separate because if you do the name separately, then you can organize by first name or by last name. If you just put it all in one column, then you don't get to make that choice. And then you add your question types. So I can say question number one, leave it as a text, and now you have the option when you want to do that, you can put in a number if you'd like. So I told you I'd show you how to make it with writing your own number, that's how you do it. You just leave it as a text item. So it's up to you whichever way you'd like to go for that. The last thing I always put in is a comments section for me, and I always make that paragraph text so that I can make a big long answer. And then basically after that you are done making your form. Next thing you're going to do is go to the live form and you can check it out and see if you like the way it looks. If you don't like the way it looks, change it. See, now it's a text question. I can type in a number there if I want. If I made it a scale question, you can go in there and edit it and make it a scale question. Make it a one to five scale and view the form. Now when I see it, it makes me choose between one of those. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go back to your rubric, and I'll show you how to get to that, because you want to see what kids' answers are so that you can do a grade. So when I go back into my drive, now you'll see that new assignment that I just made. This is the form. This is the answers. So if I click that open, now I get a spreadsheet that says what everybody did, and these are all the questions that I made up, took out, put in, things like that. Now what you're seeing in here is all of the different types of stuff that I put in for you just to show you. Um, I'm actually going to just go ahead and hide. If you just click on the column here and, and right click and say hide that column, you can actually hide anything that you don't want. So all we are using, you can see the order that I put all this stuff in. There. Now all I have left is first name, last name, question number one, and comments, which is exactly what I have on my test rubric. Now the next thing that I do is I will go ahead and put that rubric right in there with this form and the way you do that is just go down here to the bottom and add a sheet and type your rubric in here. So, you know, test rubric. I put my columns across. I put my goodies that it's worth down here. And I'll show you an example here again. That's what I put in there. I just make them bold. And now I can look at my rubric at any time I want. You see, here's my scores from that assignment. And here's my rubric from that assignment. Now you see over here, I made it automated. So that the students, total. here's their comments, here's the student's name, here's what they got, total score, and a percentage score. I'm going to show you how to do that next. So that all you have to do is take this percentage score, or take the total score, I'm sorry, and put it into your eSchool books and you're done. You can chop this up on little pieces of paper and hand it right back to the student. So to do that, all I did was this. Now I only made a one question thing so it's pretty easy. If I actually go in here and have a student do this, let me give myself a four. And I submit that form. 
when I come over here and look at my responses and refresh the screen, there it is. There's everything that I just did. Now what I can do is I always go over here and say score and I would add up all the columns that I had a score in. Now there's only one column for this so I'll just say equals and then you click on that and you can add whatever you want to. Now I can't add that because that's a comment but you can add up and just click on whatever ones you want. So my score is four and then I go over here and say percentage and then I just do the divider I know that it was out of five so what I'll do is equals this total divided by five so that's an eight now I'm going to make it into a percentage by clicking this little percent button and now the student knows the percentage grade they got and the score they got out of however many points there are. So that's helpful to you and to the student. So just to recap, in this tutorial you learned how to create the Google Form, you learned how to automate your scoring, and you learned how to put a rubric into the same area. Now this seems like a little bit of a process, but the best part about it is when you have a rubric that you really like, what you can do is go in to File and say Make a Copy. And then in, on your copy, you just say the new one. That's rubric number two, we'll call that. And now what you've just done is you've made an entire brand new rubric. If I go to My Drive, you'll see Test Rubric Number 2 in here if I refresh my screen. I had to wait for it to refresh, but there's test rubric number two. All I have to do now is just delete the information out of here. There we go. I start fresh with a new class, and I can keep on rocking. So then I just view this live form instead. Form, go to live form, test rubric number two. And there it is, all set up exactly like my other one, except for now I can add a whole batch of new students in there and make a whole new rubric out of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if you have any questions.